Visit Elmhurst.org to explore the new City of Elmhurst website. Find out the latest Elmhurst news, pay utility bills and parking tickets, report concerns, and much more. Elmhurst.org is an ideal way to discover what Elmhurst offers your business, your family, your life. Welcome to Elmhurst Now. I'm Ken Bartels, your host, and tonight we'll be interviewing Pete DeCiani, as we did on the first Elmhurst Now program back in November of 2009. But tonight we'll be interviewing Pete as the ex-mayor of Elmhurst as opposed to the brand new mayor of Elmhurst, and instead be talking to him as a newly elected member of the DuPage County Board from District 2. So Pete, welcome. Congratulations, ex-mayor, county board member, it's kind of hard to keep up. But I want to set the stage before we get into the interview, and that is we're in the Comcast studios in Elmhurst, and it's late November, and this will air during December, and the plants behind me even prove it. Uh, but on November 19th, you resigned as Elmhurst mayor, effective December 3rd, the same day you'll be seated as a member of the county board. Is, is that correct? That is correct. I'll take the oath of office for the county December 3rd and, and I'll officially be a member of the DuPage County Board. Okay, so within that context, I want to go back to your campaign for mayor in the spring of 2009 and you ran on a, on a slogan of leadership, unity, and solutions. And my first question to you is, as you look back on it, how did that slogan play out during your term as mayor? Well, I think in many ways it played out uh, the way I, I expected it to. Um, I, I, I thought I was the, the, you know, the candidate that could unite uh, the, the community, which I think we did when we, uh, when we ran and won. Uh, you know, we had a, a great, great uh, election day and, and the people came out, almost over 40% of the voters voted, which was, I believe, the highest voter turnout for a mayor race ever. Um, and we won handily, which was a good feeling. Um, but the unity part was that it was going to be the challenge. And, and knowing the fiscal situation that we were dealing with, with the economy being uh, in probably the worst situation since the Great Depression, uh, coming into uh, virtually no, no fund balance left. I think we were around three, three and a half, three point four million in fund balance. And when we were used to having eighteen to twenty million in the bank, so there wasn't a whole lot of places to go. And uh, we embraced the community with a task force. And there was 25 members on the task force that sat down and looked uh, at, at our situation and looked at our services, looked at what we valued. Because uh, they ran a campaign of, of high service delivery um, and, and keeping the quality of life of Elmers. They didn't run a campaign that government's bad and, and Elmers is inefficient. You know, uh, naturally we looked at all those efficiencies to make sure that they were. But this task force did a great job. We had walked people from all different uh, walks of life, businessmen, accountants, regular people, we had teachers, we had, you know, north side, south side, middle of town, college view. I, I think we really had a potpourri of people and, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the consensus was unanimous to do, make, the, make the moves fiscally that we needed to make. And those were tough challenges and we had a board uh, that previously couldn't make those decisions. For almost, you know, four years they couldn't make a levy increase. And uh, we had to unfortunately make a, a, a levy increase and we cut about three million out of the seven million deficit that we had and we had to raise about four million in revenues. We did it in a variety of ways, but uh, we were able to meet the challenge and, uh, and, and we got Elmer's back on track, which to me was very, very important. Well, I know, you know, you ran as the, the, hometown, the hometown candidate and I think the interesting thing about the race, is, as I look back on it, aside from the fact that there were four strong candidates, including yourself, and it was the first election after Mayor Marcucci's four-term run, which was, of course, unprecedented in sure. its own way. But it was, uh, it was interesting times because I think in, in 2009, while there were hints of the difficulties on the horizon, it still wasn't necessarily a, a, a known commodity by by any means at that at that moment in time. I want to I want to go back and just ask you some questions about your 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 term, things that occurred. Um, and by the way, of the uh, of the eighteen of the eighteen mayors that have their pictures 
hung on the walls of City Hall. Thirteen of them, including yourself, were, were one term or less. So you're definitely in the majority. <laughs> uh, sec second, or, second terms or beyond have, have not been all that common with, with Elmhurst mayors. They go on to do other things or just return to, to, to uh, private life. But you've already touched on this to a certain degree, but the impact of the Great Recession on Elmhurst, in some respects... Elmhurst fared better than many, and at the same time as mayor, I know you also witnessed the difficulties that the recession caused. Sure. We were a town that was really heavily dependent on sales tax. We had the car dealers that were almost two to one uh, sales tax versus property tax, and when the, when the recession hit, it, it just really hurt the car dealers uh, tremendously, and that really stifled our, our revenues. Uh, and it's hard to, you know, most towns that are more bedroom communities that don't have that sales tax influx didn't necessarily see what we saw. And uh, so we saw revenues really take a dip. And, uh, and that was the challenge that we had to overcome. We had to really look at where do we want to take our town? Do we believe in our services delivery? Are, are we, you know, we want to keep the town of a high quality, keep it safe, uh, keep our, uh, our roads in, in good condition, deal with stormwater issues. So, so um, I really think the community came together and I, I ran on bringing the community together in task force and not necessarily making the decisions myself, but using the talent that we have in Elmhurst and we have a tremendous amount. And I, I think that was uh, really a good move to, 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 to open that up. And, and we've had to do that for stormwater too with the challenge we faced in 2010. Well, in the financial task force, uh, you know, the unity theme that you mm -hmm. were stressing, the one of the chairs of the financial task force was one of your opponents in the mayoral race, which sort of set a tone, uh, I felt at the time, in, t in terms of that, of that unity component of the slogan that you were using. Absolutely. Uh, Scott Levin was a dear friend before we ran against each other for mayor. He's still a dear friend afterwards. Uh, I knew that uh, um, he would be a great uh, person to put on the task force. And uh, when, rep when uh, at that time, Alderman Nibel went to the House, we had an opening on the city council, and, and I thought Scott would be a great alderman, and he's been a great alderman. So I made that appointment, and I think I took a lot of people off guard. But uh, when you're confident in yourself and you're confident in other people, uh, you make those kind of decisions, and I think it showed the community that uh, you know we're we're uh, an open uh, an open uh, group of people that we you know we believe in each other. And again, I've worked with Scott in the chamber. We've uh, uh, have a great relationship, and I think he's been a good level head up on the city council. Well, I watched the, the vacancy rates in the downtown and city center. I watched the vacancy rates in the, in the business parks. And there's no question that they went up a tick. Mm -hmm. But they didn't go up like some of the communities around us did. Right. And that was commented on a great deal. And that does not mean that folks didn't struggle and that we didn't lose businesses and that, and that people found themselves in circumstances that they never anticipated. Uh, but on balance, because we were strong and because our economic, our economic base, if you will, is diversified at least from a location perspective, if not an industry perspective, uh, I, I think we fared better because of that. I think you're, you're right on. Our, our, we had one of the lowest foreclosure rates in the state of Illinois. I think our housing stock was still strong, even though we took naturally a dip like everybody else. But, but we saw our, our residents really, really hang in there. And those businesses, because those residents were strong, I think uh, were able to survive this as well, too. We have one of the lowest vacancy rates in our downtown, which I think is important. Um, you know, we've retooled at that time our economic development team and, and uh, went to uh, contractual people like yourself and Charlie Van Slyke and, and uh, um, Kathy Maloney. And I think we really kind of showed the people that we could do more with less in a lot of those ways and actually engage people that were already in the trenches um, and that, that really, uh, you know, that we've had success, and that's, that's uh, been the key, you know. Well, I think the, the, the flip side of the Great Recession, of course, are, are other things that I, I know uh, the next thing I want to ask you about, and that is the economic development successes pretty much all through the difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. You open up uh, a number of new businesses essentially in the area of Route 83 and St. Charles Road, uh, across the street from a very successful uh, center, uh, even across Route 83 with some, with some initiatives. That's one thing I'd want you to comment on because I know how involved you were with that. 
And then there, of course, uh, we're at the Comcast Studios and, and in, the, in, our, in our prime with a, with a really good throw, we probably could hit the new Marianos from Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Uh, that's going up on the corner of, of York and Industrial Drive, and and want to talk about that, and then some other things as well. But just some comments on both those areas. I think what, one thing that I was able to really um, bring the council together around was was economic development. And I, I said, you know, guys, if we're if we're not going forward, we're going backwards. And and at the end of the day, we want to relieve the tax burden on our residents. And, and give them nice things to, to shop with. So you, you take 83 in St. Charles, which was uh, a dorm in Amelings. Um, it was basically doing nothing. A uh, field that was empty and a building that was old and obsolete. And, and uh, not in our TIF district, but right across the street from the TIF district, which I think really made it compelling because we have probably the number one calls in the area uh, that drives a ni nice economic engine for that whole corner, Dominic's, uh, just, uh, you know, Sears. So, so uh, we were able to uh, work with a, a street uh, vacancy there um, that w we were able to, to make that f uh, area bigger and better, uh, allow for more parking, and we got you know, we've got a Smash Burger there, we've got a Qdoba, we've got a Total Hockey, we've got uh, you know I think 150 jobs went went right into that corner, uh, and vibrant businesses. We got Verizon in there, a lot of sales tax coming out of that little corner that was really doing nothing. And th those are those are like the upper I think the economic opportunities that we've seen in Elmhurst in this council. Fortunately, uh, has embraced those those opportunities um, and work with businesses in a, in a great way. Uh, we looked at the at you know, our, our commissions, the Economic Development Commission looked at nine different areas throughout town uh, and said uh, these are areas that could really use a, a boost. But of those nine, we've got three that really could use a boost. And um, the North York TIF, which we just uh, put in place over the summer, uh, which is going to be the, uh, the the anchor for Mariano's. Uh, it's under underway as we speak, and it'll be open in the spring. 450 jobs, you know, uh, 50 million dollars a year in, in revenue. Uh, it's about a half a million dollars in sales tax for the city. Uh, increment for our, our schools. Uh, it, it's a win-win all the way around. So, uh, and I think we're just going to see that continue uh, in the North York area, from North Avenue all the way to Grand. And, and I don't think anybody could argue that that area was was tired and it needed a, a shot in the arm. Uh, we've got two additional areas that this council will need to uh, take a look at uh, across from Walmart. Uh, we've got a whole area there that's going to be redevelopable, uh, redevelopable because of uh, floodplain changes and because your mayor and as well as the previous mayor was on stormwater, uh, we're going to see property come out of the floodplain there and be redevelopable. So I, I think we're going to see the opportunity for a big box off 83. Uh, and then we've got York and Villette, which is the third TIF district that's proposed a um, lot of opportunities, and it's up to this council, I think, to, to really embrace those and kind of really improve Elmhurst, which I think is, at the end of the day, what we're here for. So you start off as mayor, and you have a very well-established and, and uh, uh, very well thought of and accomplished city manager. And one of the things you get to do relatively early in your mayoral term is find the new city manager, which doesn't happen that often in Elmhurst. There's only been now three <coughs> mm -hmm. since we went to that form of government. So you talk a little bit about the, the city manager search that results in James Grabowski joining us. Absolutely. Well, t first of all, Tom Borcher was a great city manager to work with. And for me as a new mayor uh, coming in, it was a huge help. Uh, learning the ropes, having a steady hand. I, I knew I was a steady hand, but Borchard was, was, was phenomenal. And, and knowing that he was going to be leaving soon was a big challenge for me and wanting to make sure we had somebody that would keep that, that, the steady hand on, on, on the city. Uh, we searched, we did a national, national search and, and uh, looked throughout uh, the whole Midwest and uh, found a young man that uh, we thought had the, the, uh, the strength and the leadership and uh, Jim Grabowski was our selection. And uh, we also had an internal candidate, Mike Kopp, who we uh, ended up flanking Jim at the end as the assistant city manager. So we felt we had continuity with Mike Kopp. We felt we had new leadership with Jim Grabowski. And at the end of the day, I think we have a dynamite team. Um, you know, Jim's got economic development experience. He's got stormwater experience, things that we were really you know, critical on uh, in, in leading this community. And Mike's got the continuity of history, which, which I thought was very important too. So at the end of the day, I think we got a great team. Well, you mentioned it. You, uh, you used the term storm. Uh, <laughs> and it would, have, it would seem to me that, and this is not unique, of course, but Elmhurst mayors 
face storms uh, at least uh, once in a while. Uh, and you faced a couple doozies in 2010, 2011, different kinds of storms, but the havoc that they, that they wreaked were, was, was devastating to the, to the community and the area of the communities that was affected. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how it feels to get that call to run over to the command center because this is not gonna go well? And then maybe as a, as a segue then moment, uh, how the whole FEMA assistance wound up working out. Sure, sure. Well, those are the calls you don't want to get. But uh, unfortunately, when you're the mayor, those are the calls that you get. And um, you take what, what, uh, what God gives you. And unfortunately, we had, a, we had several weather events that were, in, uh, that were natural disasters, uh, two of which were exceeding of a 100-year event, which is considered you know, a 100-year event. You know, and we had them back to back within literally a month uh, of each right. other. And, uh, you know, very difficult, um, uh, you know, you, you, you know, when you're from this town and you, you see people suffering, you take it personal and you want to do whatever you can to help people. Um, but, uh, you, you know, you, you didn't make it rain seven inches in 45 minutes. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to deal with the aftermath and, and making sure that people uh, have care and people are, are safe and, and have resources and, uh, you know, you, it's all hands on deck. Fortunately, we, we were trained uh, very well when we came in. Um, you know, they put us through all the EOC training. Uh, you hoped you, you never need it, but all of us were ready to, to go in case, God forbid, something did happen. And, and we've had to open up the EOC, I think, four or five times in my first, in, in my term as mayor. Um, and, uh, you know, fortunately, I've worked with uh, legislators at different levels, at state and the federal level. Uh, back when I was doing Brianna's Law and trying to help people with autism, I, I worked with Dick Durbin at the federal level. I, I worked. Uh, uh, with the governor at the state level, and uh, fortunately, those ties, um, uh, while, while bipartisan, uh, pay, paid off for Elmhurst. And uh, I was able to get uh, uh, the second most powerful senator in the country to come to Elmhurst and walk the streets with me, show him the, the, the damage uh, of, of all the homes that we had, and, uh, and then we got the governor to come uh, to, to sign off the declaration. And, and uh, uh, it was important because we, we needed the relief for the residents. Um, you know, they, we had almost a 350 million dollar um, uh, relief effort for this region, which was the largest ever in the history, even larger than the one in the 80s. That, that you know, we I saw when I was a kid, and you were over at Elmhurst College. So uh, uh, not easy to deal with. In fact, uh, one of my fellow mayors said, "There's no book on being a mayor. You know, you, you, you just do it. You know, and uh, and we did. And uh, you, you know, you, you try to do the best you can, and you reach out to the resources that you you're, you know." You work with your staff, and, and uh, fortunately, we're able to, to, to get the declaration and get our, our residents a lot of assistance. And you know, now we're looking for permanent fixes and ways that we can improve things so things like that don't happen again. But uh, challenging when they're extreme, you know. Uh, so Absolutely. It's, yeah. Now we mentioned the financial task force earlier, and of course, then then you uh, you and the city council created the stormwater task force, which is still functioning and still in place as we speak. Can you, can you compare the two task forces in terms of what, what they've been asked to do? Uh, one, of course, completed, one very much still in, sure. in uh, a work in progress. Well, finance task force, you know, we thought we had a $4 million hole. When we came in, it ended up being closer to seven. The task force looked at all the different services that we offer. We, we tried to put a cost to each one. We put a value to each one and a rank. So if we had to make some cuts, what, what's what's priority and what's what's low, okay. and then we had uh, you know looked at different revenues and how we can you know are there different ways to bring in other uh, other revenues? What, what's our long-term goals for economic development? Um, you know, uh, what revenues can we bring in right now? Are we gonna are we have to go to property taxes? Are we gonna bring in motor fuel? So they looked at all those different options, similar to that, and they, it was a 24 to one vote uh, to make the moves that we made, which I thought was. Uh, pretty much a consensus that we gave the city council direction as to what we, what we needed to do. Tough decisions, but we had the community behind us, which was important. Likewise, with the stormwater situation, you know, nearly 750 homes with water, uh, you know, uh, a brand junior high gym that was full of people, fr frustrated people, and I understand, and it was, it was not an easy day for anybody, but especially those people who had water in their houses. And, and I knew that, you know, people want to be involved and when I put that task force together, we had over, I think we had 80 people apply and 
Right. We had ended up about 40 or 50 on the task force and just intelligent people, engineers, we, you know, again, all walks of life. And uh, I think we, we came up with a nice report and recommendations to, to give us a, a, a vision for how we can fix our stormwater challenges. Okay, I think we're going to take a break right at this point. Mm -hmm. When we come back, I've got some unfinished business questions for the ex-mayor, and then I want to talk about the county board a little bit, too. We need to uh, hopefully educate some folks about just what county government gets involved with. So this is Elmhurst Now, and we'll be right back. Have you visited the Elmhurst Public Library lately? The Kids Library is a wonderful place, especially with our many exciting children's programs. The second floor is home to the adult and teen collections. From research to magazines, we've got it. We have more than 80 computers throughout the building. Or bring your own laptop. The entire building has wireless access. Need a quiet place to study? Try our silent study rooms. Book one of our spacious meeting rooms for your group. Our convenient book drop and drive up window make picking up and returning library materials a breeze. And don't forget, EPL is open 24-7 online at elmhurstpubliclibrary.org. There are several thousand collisions involving trains each year, which result in over 1,000 injuries and several hundred deaths. A majority of these deaths occur when someone is struck by a train while trespassing on railroad property. Remember, railroad property is private property. Trespassing along railroad property is not only against the law, it's very dangerous. Avoid taking shortcuts. The only safe place to cross railroad tracks is at a designated crossing. Don't get caught dead on the tracks. Stay off, stay away, stay alive. Visit Elmhurst.org to explore the new City of Elmhurst website. Find out the latest Elmhurst news, pay utility bills and parking tickets, report concerns, and much more. Elmhurst.org is an ideal way to discover what Elmhurst offers your business, your family, your life. Welcome back to Elmhurst Now. I'm Ken Bartels and we're talking with Pete DeCiani, former mayor and now member of the DuPage County Board about his time in office and his time going forward. And before we went to break, we, we sort of covered some things that happened in your term as mayor, Pete, but I, I wanna shift gears just a little bit and talk about uh, local government is local. Uh, the, the folks that you deal with in the council chambers and their requests or, or difficulties are also the folks that you wind up standing in line with at, at uh, Jewel or uh, Mariano's uh, coming forward. <laughs> uh, which means that the criticism that comes with being an elected local leader such as the mayor, uh, it's, that's gotta be a little personal. And I'm just wondering whether the degree of interaction, the degree of criticism infrequently, but it happens. Uh, how, did, how did that affect you as, as a newly elected mayor? Well, first of all, you, you are in the limelight uh, a lot, so uh, you know, you're constantly being uh, scrutinized, so you definitely have to have thick skin. You, you cannot be a mayor and be a, a good leader if you're you know, a thin-skinned person, because then you'll take everything personal and you're not gonna wanna actually take on any challenges. And we had a lot of challenges to take on, so I had a thick skin and, and um, you know, some of the papers criticized some of the things that we were doing, but uh, at the end of the day, you gotta make decisions on what you feel is best for your community. And I gotta tell you, being out and about, and I am out and about all the time, I have people coming up to me and thanking me and giving me compliments. So, so from that respect, I didn't have a lot of criticism on the street. Uh, but you know you're dealing with the local papers and they're always trying to push their sales so they, a lot of times they sensationalize different challenges but it's okay that's part of life and uh, again you gotta have you gotta believe in what you're doing you have to have United Council that's that's behind you which I, I did and, and that's thank God that that allowed us to get uh, get through some really really tough challenges uh, both with financially and economic development and and uh, um, you know we talked about leadership, leadership, unity, and solutions, and I think we, we've got a lot to be proud of in, in, the, in the almost four years that we served here. Okay, so near the end of your time as, as mayor, 
I know your hope was to be mayor and be on the county board. The, if you will, controversy over dual office holding. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, did the controversial nature of that plan on your part, number one, did that surprise you? And then eventually with the referendum, did the degree of the referendum overwhelmingly not in favor of mm -hmm. such a move, did, did those two things surprise you? Uh, a little bit. Um, I know, you know, when you really enjoy doing what you're, what you're doing, uh, the mayor position was a position I really enjoyed, and, and uh, I didn't want it to look like I was, this was a stepping stone because it was not by any means. But I also knew that the county could solve a lot of our problems. And, and when, you're, when you're the second mayor in the history to sign a declaration of emergency, and you know that you can get resources from your county to help your community, you know, you, you want to, you know, I'm an ambitious guy, and I'm trying to help, help my community, and I decided uh, that I would run for that position but yet still try to uh, maintain being mayor. I was gonna give up full compensation. I thought uh, that was fair and, and I, uh, actually when we went out to get petitions, people were like, this, this is not an issue. Um, but you know, again, when you're, when you're in public office, uh, people are always taking shots and we had a small contingent of people that uh, tried to make this an issue and they did. And uh, we saw two different questions on the referendum um, and I think they were both worded in a way that was not favorable for passage, and we saw almost a 20-point difference just between the two questions. So, uh, uh, you know, at, at the end, when you, when you spin it, um, you want to do two or more things. I think that looks uh, like it's something that uh, maybe is too much for one person. Uh, what I was looking to do was be a part-time mayor and, uh, and be a part-time county board member, give up the pay as mayor. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an ambitious guy, and uh, I love my community, so that was why I, I did what I did. When I saw it to becoming a problem with the council, um, that's when I decided it was important uh, to, to put my ambition aside, because uh, that, could, that could have possibly hurt the Marianos coming to town, hurt our TIF district, all things that were uh, positive. And uh, so it was my goal to, to bring that, that council back to a united front, and I did. And uh, I think that was the best move that I, I could make. Um, and looking back and looking what the numbers uh, came out, it was, I, I think, the right move. And uh, if I did uh, uh, insult anybody in, in, in being ambitious, it was, not, uh, it was not for monetary purposes, it was, it was not for uh, ego, it was really at the end of the day to help, our, help my community and help our community. So. Um, but uh, uh, again, I'm glad I think I made, made the right choice at the end of the day. Okay, some unfinished business as, as you've left the mayor's office. Uh, Commonwealth Edison, uh, you know, it's interesting, uh, electric aggregation as opposed to electric aggravation. <laughs> uh, but uh, how's that going? Well, we've been working very, very closely with ComEd. Uh, not only myself, but even a lot of the aldermen are engaged quite heavily with Commonwealth Edison. If you notice, they are, uh, we, we, you know, many of us, I supported the smart grid because I knew at the end of the day, you know, we needed infrastructure and, you know, you don't get anything for free. Um, some of the aldermen, you know, thought it was uh, not a good idea. Uh, I, as a mayor, working with the legislators, uh, knowing the issue uh, and also knowing government because at the end of the day, you, you get what you pay for. And in this case, uh, we, we felt that uh, we, we needed to support ComEd. Uh, that legislation passed. We are seeing smart grid go in as we speak, and uh, we're dealing with tree trimming with ComEd, and they're, they're being very aggressive. They got a four-year cycle down to a one-year cycle because uh, Elmhurst has uh, got a lot of vegetation that, that likes to touch trees. And we've had the storms, you know, this past summer, five days of 100-degree weather and over three, 400 trees down. And those are, those are challenging times that even ComEd can't deal with. You know, um, it's hard when a tree falls on a power line. So, um, right. but, but they've gotten much, much better, much more responsive. Um, I have been sitting on a task force that meets quarterly with the mayors and uh, uh, sitting right next to the CEO, uh, making sure we've got direct dialogue. And, and that, that's been, I think ComEd's in many ways changed a lot of their ways. And I'm hoping that that will continue, so. Progress on the stormwater front. Uh, obviously that that's going to be years and years and yeah. years in the doing but what looks to be first well I think you know we're going to continue to 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 fund financially what we can fund you know sewer lining overhead sewers uh, we move money around to accommodate that and I think we had a record number of people put overhead sewers in which is great 
because uh, that separates the clean and the, the dirty water and it really help, helps the system overall. Uh, Chris Burke uh, indicated that virtually 80% of the problem is private side. So the more we can incent uh, the private side people, meaning the regular residents, to, to upgrade their, their, their homes, uh, the, the better for the overall system. Now we've got other challenges too in the systems, but that's going to require you know, some pretty large policy decisions from the city council. And that's why I looked at the county uh, as a resource because uh, there's a lot of things that the county can do to al alleviate the regional issues which could drive down the cost of the local issues. So uh, being a stormwater commissioner for the last three and a half years, uh, I think I have a pretty good knowledge and understanding of how both can work together. Han Street. Han Street's a, a, an opportunity in, in the making. Um, we've got we've to look at our downtown and realize that you know, the, the height limit of a 45-foot building in downtown Elmhurst, nine feet taller than my home, is, is, is something that has to change. We need to go to 65 feet minimum, okay? Uh, and, and also have allowances to even go higher in certain areas. Uh, land is expensive. We need to get the best use out of our land. And I hope that this council uh, will look at uh, the, 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 um, the study that was done, uh, which indicates height, and also uh, rentals, upscale rentals, which I think would be a great benefit to our, our downtown. Our, our restaurants, you know, we've got full stores, but they're struggling. And they could use density, they could use offices down there, they could use residents living down there, and we need to take advantage of that, that height and that density. And I know sometimes, you know, for, for some of the older people that don't want to see our downtown change, that could be a little challenging, but we want, it, we want to be uh, vibrant, and we want to see those businesses succeed. And it's really, at the end of the day, how they, how they will. And the... Uh Deck on Addison Street. Deck on Addison Street, another opportunity to go a little higher. We can put, again, land's expensive. So you can go up and put 650 stalls in that deck, or you could stay 45 feet and put 400 stalls in that deck. You've got one time to do it. I say go a little higher, put a nice little retail on the first floor as, as is already intended for that, that facility. And we're looking at offices, and I think that's going to be a very viable option as well, too. But again, I think we need to go a little bit higher, especially in that central area of, of the central business district. But again, when you're limited to nine feet higher than a home, I think it's unrealistic in today's day. Well, and obviously these things are for the next mayor, whoever that turns out to be, and the city council uh, elections mm -hmm. coming up, of course, in, in April of, of 2013. I want to I shift gears, uh, as you have. I mean... Uh, you're heading on out to Wheaton and uh, joining the county board. And the county board, first of all, some really basic things. How many county board members are there? There's 18 of us. Uh, there's six dis districts and three representatives per district. Okay. In a nutshell, what is county government responsible for? Well, if you look at county government, picture it as a, as a larger-than-life city, okay, that oversees many other cities and villages. Um, we have a sheriff, just like the, most cities have a police department. Uh, we have a court system, which is unlike most towns, although some towns have a little courtroom. Um, the, uh, store, the county is responsible for sheriff, court, courthouse, clerk, uh, all the records, um, responsible for uh, stormwater, big, big key for Elmhurst, uh, public health and public safety. Uh, public health, they have a $52 million public health budget that goes to help people that are low income, that goes to help people that are disabled, that goes to help senior citizens that uh, might need a meal, that can't afford it, um, uh, that goes to the convalescent center, uh, which is skilled nursing. So the county has a lot of resources that I, I think, uh, I, I know for me personally, um, I've been a big advocate for people with disabilities and uh, for people with autism, and I look at that as a huge, uh, you know, $52 million is a bigger budget than what I have at Elmhurst Operate, and here I could scratch the itch of public health, which uh, I couldn't do uh, as, as a mayor. Uh, to, that, to that degree, I think our public health budget was about $100,000 in, in relation to you know, put that in perspective. But we did a great, lot of great things. We deli in Elmhurst, we delivered 14,000 meals a year to our seniors, subsidized those. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the social service side, to economic development. I'm looking to get on that committee and be the regional uh, arm to help municipalities uh, grow. And uh, so those are, those are some of the, uh, the areas that I'm looking to really participate in. Now the county is, is changing. I think the, the demographics are changing. The mm -hmm. way that the county looks at itself from 
economic development as as well as how it how it looks at itself in relationship to the city of Chicago. I mean, the economic development engines for the state are are north, and DuPage County is clearly one of those arms in tandem with the city of Chicago. I think. Uh, what do those changes look like going forward, do you think? I mean, Well, I think we've got a huge opportunity with the Western Access happening. Uh, you know, that was in the works for 20, 30 years. I know people, mayors, been, been in office for a long, long time saying that it would never happen. And, uh, and now we have it happening, a $3.4 billion project. I think that's really going to be a, sh a big shot in the arm for DuPage County. It's going to give us more uh, connectivity to the airport, uh, which is a huge economic engine. And, uh, and it's, it's going to open up our transit system for, for DuPage. Uh, so the more ability you have to move commerce around, the more, uh, you know, uh, the, the more people are going to want to do business out here. Uh, our tax base is low. Uh, you buy a building in Cook County and you pay $3 a foot. And you buy that same building in, in uh, DuPage County, you pay a dollar a foot. So that's why you see a lot of that industry coming to DuPage. Uh, so our, our goal is to keep it vibrant keep that, uh, that fertile ground and, uh, and go out there and, and pull those businesses uh, in, into DuPage. So uh, it's important, and, and uh, again, to keep our tax base low for our residents, to keep our service volumes up, um, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the way I did it with Mariano's and trying to bring retailers to Elmhurst. I'll be doing that at a county level and, and working with towns uh, just, I, just like I have been as a mayor. So I, I think I'll bring a lot of those tools to the table pretty quickly. Now, district, you mentioned six districts, but District 2, mm -hmm. which uh, a part of Elmhurst is in, uh, is pretty far-reaching uh, in terms of the numbers of communities that it sort of pans across. Uh, you'll also be representing what other communities? I mean, uh, We're going to be representing communities from Elmhurst all the way out to Naperville. And in between, uh, Addison, Lombard, Villa Park, Oak Brook, Oak Brook Terrace, part of Hinsdale, uh, Westmont, Downers Grove, um, Lyle, uh, Woodridge. So uh, we got some great communities in that in that pathway. Um, but you know, just like an alderman in Elmhurst that votes for his little area, he still votes for the whole town. Uh, I will be voting for issues in the first district and all the way throughout the, all the districts. So and I'll be working with those those county board commissioners uh, to to you know to bring resources to their areas and vice versa. So it's. Uh, it's, it's going to be uh, uh, interesting to work with everybody, and I'm, I'm lo really looking forward to, uh, to, to those challenges. In your campaign mm -hmm. uh, within District 2, what, what, I mean, we've been talking about Elmhurst, and that's absolutely appropriate, but what kind of issues are in other communities that might not necessarily be as affected in Elmhurst? Well, uh, stormwater definitely affects uh, um, Villa Park and Lombard and Oak Brook. So those are some common issues. Um, a, lot of, a lot of those other towns, some of the smaller towns, uh, have limited resources on public safety uh, compared to our 70-man you know, police department and some towns don't have fire, fire, fire departments, they have districts. So, um, you know, different, different uh, sized towns have different needs. Uh, uh, you know, we're not nearly as needy on the county as, as, uh, as some of the smaller communities. Uh, so when you look at, uh, like for instance, Burr Ridge, County does a lot for them. They read their water meters. They, they you know, they do a lot of other things besides, uh, you know, stormwater, you know, or, or sheriff. Uh, in our community, uh, their, their primary primary uh, issues are stormwater, uh, court system, et cetera. So um, the, the intergovernmental, intergovernmental agreements between Elmhurst and the county are minimal compared to a smaller community you know, that might rely more on county government. So shift gears, but mm -hmm. but staying with with the county, obviously. Uh, the obvious difference of, of size and, and one community, the, the differences between running for mayor and running for county board as a candidate. I knocked on 4,000 doors as a mayor, and friends, family, and volunteers knocked on probably the other, uh, uh, the other what, uh, 12,000, uh, and we knocked on every single door in Elmhurst. It was impossible to do that in a county board race because we, we had 14 communities, uh, almost a quarter of a million uh, homes to knock on. So much, much different, uh, different type of a race. And uh, so we had to rely more on resources and, and telephones. And we, we had an office set up with live phone calling. Uh, we did a lot of direct mail. Uh, we did a lot of internet. So t a much different type of a campaign. Uh, but at the end of the day, we still tried to keep it as grassroots as we could um, and, and use the personal touch with 
with phone calling and we did some door knocking as well too but we had to be a lot more selective you know because you just don't have that many resources to knock on that many doors some immediate goals as you join the county board in in Wheaton well you know I had orientation you know uh, today uh, when I uh, I know this is being aired in December but uh, uh, learning uh, making sure that I, I learned the ropes and and uh, you know I, I've been on stormwater for three years but there's a lot of committees I need to learn about learning exactly what uh, the the ins and the outs of county government uh, while being a mayor I, I, I come in with a vast knowledge um, learning as much as I can and then addressing issues, uh, stormwater issues, which are, are big for our, our, our community, um, addressing some of the fire district issues that we have that are imminent that I know of as, as being a mayor already, and uh, really working with the mayors. I've got uh, 14 great mayors, all of which that endorsed me, and really taking their lead as to what, what are your challenges, how can I help you? And uh, so it's gonna be a little bit of a different role, but in many ways, uh, it'll be kind of neat because I'll, I'll be on the other end of the mayor, making sure that uh, I'm here to serve them. Well, I've known you a long time. Uh, community activist, uh, philanthropist to a certain degree, elected official, uh, concerned citizen, and now at least in Elmhurst, private citizen once again. Mm -hmm. And I think obviously, Pete, uh, your service and the time and, and the commitment and as I think was said uh, by one of the aldermen at, at your farewell or at your last meeting as mayor, you know, you, you absolutely were always had, had the town, your hometown in, in the forefront of your thinking. Um, as we close, uh, an opportunity to talk to the fellow citizens uh, and just share a word. Absolutely. I just want to thank everybody for their support. It, it was a great, uh, it was a great four years of my life. Uh, I, I loved every single minute of it, minute of it uh, including the challenges and trying to turn those challenges into uh, opportunities for our residents. And uh, I just can't say thank you enough for, uh, for all those residents for, for supporting me for mayor. And uh, you know, I uh, left my heart on the field because I, uh, I, I always gave it my all. Well, thank you, Pete. Uh, thank you most sincerely. So, This has been Elmhurst Now. We've been talking with former Mayor Pete DeCiani and now District 2 County Board Member for the County of DuPage. I'm Ken Bartels and we will see you again. Have a wonderful holiday season. The Elmhurst Historical Museum, located in downtown Elmhurst, is proud to present award-winning exhibits for visitors of all ages. Our adult tea time talk series, family programs, and special events make learning about history interesting and fun. Admission is free, and on-site parking is available. Visit the Elmhurst Historical Museum soon. Call us today, or go to our website for the latest program details. Hi, I'm John Quigley, President and CEO of the Elmhurst Chamber of Commerce and Industry. In these challenging economic times, it's imperative that our residents and businesses band together to not only shop Elmhurst, but buy Elmhurst whenever possible. We have great stores in our city center, Spring Road, Butterfield Road, York and Vallette Streets, St. Charles and Route 83, North Avenue and Lake Street, along North York and even Grand Avenue. I ask for your help. Let's keep our tax dollars in Elmhurst.